Hello, Chemistry 107 students. This is Professor Sansom, and this is your pre-lab video for experiment one. We're going to talk today about part one and part two of the experiment. Part one is an online simulation to help you understand what's happening at the molecular level when we're using the spectrometer. In part two, you'll be doing Beer's Law with a spectrometer. So to begin in part one, you'll need to make an online account at learn.concord.org. When you get to that website, click on sign up and then type in your name and your password that you've chosen and select student. Then click on sign up for Learn Portal. When you get to the next screen, enter the class code, which is chem107. After you've done that, it'll give you a username. So make sure you write that down in your lab manual. Once you've done that, sign in with your username and password. Select the spectroscopy and Beer's Law activity and click on Run. Once you've clicked on Run, you'll arrive at a page that outlines the whole activity and you'll see that there are three different pages that are part of this activity. You can click on Begin Activity to start answering the questions and doing the experiment. Notice on the left side of the page, you'll have instructions and the right side will have a simulator. If you just follow the instructions on the left, it'll help you use the simulation. If you scroll down, you'll see that there are questions on the left that you need to answer as you're doing this activity. Make sure that you talk with your lab partner about them because you'll turn in one report for both of you. On this page, let me just talk about how to run the activity. So you'll see at the bottom there's a play button. If you click on play, the atoms will begin moving around. And that's the beginning of what we, we would call running the activity. Notice there are several things that you can control. For example, there's gas A, gas B, gas C, and then a mixture of gases and you don't know which gases are in there. So let's begin with gas A. What you're going to do is click on the run button and then shine light on the mixture. And you'll see that there are three photons that come across at a time. You can adjust the wavelength of the photon using the slider bar at the bottom of the simulator. As you do that, you'll see that the photons actually change slightly. They change colors and they, they change how squiggly they are. And if you adjust this, eventually you'll find a wavelength of light that this gas will absorb. You'll be able to tell that the atoms are absorbing light because they'll get excited. They get a little yellow ring around them. And also the photons will uh, not make it through the mixture. What you're going to do is count how many photons are transmitted for each shot of three photons. So three photons go in and zero photons hit the side. Three photons go in, and one photon hits the side. Three photons go in, and zero photons hit the side. Three in, and zero photons hit the side, etc. So for each shot that goes in, you just count how many photons hit the right side. The right side of the box in this case indicates the detector in our spectrometer. When you've finished doing this experiment on the first page, just go to the top, and click on 2 to go to the next page or click on the, the right arrow to go to the next page. Notice each of these pages is going to be testing a different variable in Beer's Law. Remember, Beer's Law is absorbance equals epsilon Cl. That first page was about epsilon or the identity of the molecules. The second page is about concentration. The third page is about the path length. When you've finished answering all of the questions and completing all three simulations, if you scroll down to the bottom of the third page, it'll say generate a report. If you click on that button, you'll see all of the answers to your questions. Then you can click on print if you can save it as a PDF on your computer, or you can click on share and that'll give you a link that you can share with your lab partner and with yourself if you can't print right now um, to be able to print your report later on. Make sure that you do that during class and share that with your lab partner because again, both of you will be turning in the same report for this part of the lab. 
We'll now begin part two of the experiment. In part two, like in part one, you'll be investigating Beer's Law. In part 2a, you'll be varying substances. We have three substances that you'll be investigating. One is copper 2 nitrate, which is blue, cobalt 2 nitrate, which is pink, and nickel 2 nitrate, which is green. Before you begin, make sure you've downloaded the PASCO spectrometry software onto the device that you're using. Connect a spectrometer to your device using a USB cable or a Bluetooth connection, and then open the spectrometry program. PASCO Spectrometry is a software we'll be using frequently for this class. Let me give you a brief tutorial on some of the features that you may find useful. First of all, notice the four different settings on the bar above our graph. The Analyze Solution setting helps us see the absorbance or transmittance spectrum of many wavelengths for a given solution. The Concentration setting allows us to measure the absorbance of a solution for a specific wavelength at various different concentrations. We'll use this later in lab today to determine the concentration of your unknown solution. The time setting allows us to measure absorbance of a wavelength over time. We won't be using the analyze light setting in this class. On the top left corner, notice that there is a paper document icon. Use this button to save your data frequently, just in case your computer unexpectedly closes the program. You can also open save data from the same place. In the top right corner, there are options that allow you to take snapshots of your data to share with your lab partner. To the left of these icons is a symbol that indicates whether or not you are connected to your spectrometer. On the bottom left is a red circle. Once clicked, it will begin analyzing the solution in the cuvette. To stop analyzing the solution, click the same button again. To the right of the record button is the Calibrate Dark and Calibrate Light tabs. You'll use these buttons in the procedure in order to properly calibrate your spectrometer. In the Analyze Solution tab, there are three helpful buttons at the bottom of the screen. This is the Scale to Fit button. Sometimes you may accidentally zoom in or out of the graph too much. You'll click this whenever you want to see your data scaled and fit properly on the screen. The next button is the Coordinate tool. We use it to find the measurements on an exact point of our data. When you use it, make sure to drag and drop the crosshairs onto your data. Lastly, the comparison button can be used to display more than one graph of data at a time. The concentration and time settings have similar features. If you ever have questions about the spectrometry software, Appendix B in your lab manual has more information about what each button does. To begin, calibrate the spectrometer. Click on Analyze Solution at the top of the spectrometry program. On the bottom left side of your screen, locate the button that says Calibrate Dark when you hover over it. It looks like a dark spectrometer. Before you click, make sure that your spectrometer is completely empty. There shouldn't be any cuvettes inside of the spectrometer. Click on the Calibrate Dark button. Wait for a moment as the spectrometer calibrates. Next, fill a cuvette with deionized water and put it into the spectrometer. You want to make sure that your cuvette is aligned properly. So if you look at the sides of the cuvette, you'll see that some of the sides are transparent, while some of them are sort of fuzzy. You want the transparent side facing the light source, which is indicated by the white light symbol on the top of the spectrometer. Once the spectrometer is ready with the cuvette inside, click on the button that says Calibrate Reference. It's the light spectrometer shape at the bottom part of the screen. After you're done with this, make sure both calibration icons have a green check mark next to them, before you continue. To begin the experiment, measure about 3 milliliters of the 0.05 molar copper 2 nitrate solution and put it into your cuvette. Put a lid on top of your cuvette and invert the cuvette just to mix the solution and then place it inside of the spectrometer. Make sure that again that it's aligned properly with the transparent side facing the white light symbol on the spectrometer. In the spectrometry program, click on the red circle at the bottom left of the screen, and that will begin measuring the spectrum of your solution. When the spectrum appears and the system is measuring the spectrum, the red circle will change to a red square. After a few seconds, click on the red square to stop the measurement. Then remove your cuvette and empty the contents into a waste beaker so that you can get ready for the next two solutions. Make sure that you rinse out your cuvette 
with distilled water in between solutions. Now that you have the spectrum for your first solution, record the lambda max in the data table for question one on the report form. You should also calculate the epsilon value for each substance, two values for your nickel solution, and also check your answers with your lab partner. When you analyze your nickel solution, there will be multiple peaks on your graph. Make sure to select the two peaks in the infrared region, not the peak in the ultraviolet region. If you look at the y-axis of the graph, you can click on the word absorbance, and this will switch the graph to transmittance. Discuss your observations with your lab partner. Which wavelengths are absorbed by each solution? Which wavelengths are transmitted? What colors do the solutions appear? After this, answer question two on your lab report. We'll now begin part 2b, which is varying concentrations. For this part of the experiment, you're going to use cobalt 2 nitrate solutions, and you're going to see what happens when you change the concentration. So to begin, you'll start with the 0.5 molar cobalt 2 nitrate. You'll add about 3 milliliters of it to your cuvette and place it into the spectrometer, again, making sure that it's aligned correctly. You'll click on the red circle at the bottom left of the screen to measure the spectrum of your solution. And after a few seconds, click on the red square to stop the measurement. At this point, you can use the coordinate tool to drag the coordinate to the lambda max for the solution, which should be between 510 and 530 nanometers. Once you've selected your lambda max, click on the check mark next to the box displaying the wavelength. Then, at the top of the screen, select the Concentration tab. Make sure that you check your pre-lab calculations with your TA before you continue with the experiment. You'll be doing a serial dilution of cobalt-2 nitrate. The concentrations you'll be measuring are 0.25 molar, 0.1 molar, 0.05 molar, and 0.01 molar. So enter each of these concentrations in descending order into the table on the left side of the screen. Now I'll talk you through doing a serial dilution. For the first step, add the required amount of the 0.25 molar stock solution to a graduated cylinder. Be careful when you're doing this that you measure the volume of this stock solution at the bottom of the meniscus. Use a pipette to add the approximate amount and then continue adding it dropwise until you've reached the correct volume. If you add too much of the stock solution, you can remove a small amount with the pipette. After you've done this, add the required amount of distilled water to the graduated cylinder, bringing the total volume up to exactly 10 milliliters. Again, being careful to measure the volume at the bottom of the meniscus. Note that you cannot remove water if you overshoot the desired volume, so you should add the last milliliter slowly or dropwise. Once you've added both the stock solution and the distilled water, mix the new solution several times by slowly pulling it up into the pipette and then slowly expelling it back into the graduated cylinder. When it's thoroughly mixed, it should appear to be the same color throughout. Your cuvette of 0.25 molar solution should still be in the spectrometer, so measure its absorbance by clicking on the Start button. The absorbance will appear in the right-hand column next to the concentration values you entered. Once the absorbance value is visible, click the check mark located next to the cell to lock in that value, and then click Stop. Be sure to collect all unwanted lab materials, these solutions, after you're done with them, in a beaker on your lab bench. Don't put them down the sink, and then rinse out the cuvette with distilled water before adding the next solution. And then continue until you've measured the absorbance of each of these solutions. After you have the absorbance of each solution, Use the Show Linear Fit tool. It looks like a line with dots around it. And this will give you the equation of the best fit line for your data. The slope of your line is your molar extinction coefficient, epsilon, for this substance. If you've done your serial dilution correctly, you should have a good R squared, which would be greater than 0.95, meaning that your line, uh, your points, your data points are close to this best fit line. If you see that your data points are much higher than the line, or that the intercept wouldn't naturally be zero, it's likely because your serial dilution was not performed correctly. So you may want to redo some part of that. 
Now that we've created a line of best fit with our data, we can use this line to approximate the concentration of our unknown by measuring the absorbance and comparing it to our line. Before you leave lab, you will get a test tube filled with an unknown concentration of cobalt-2 nitrate from your TA. Make sure to record the code given on the test tube in your lab report and then measure the absorbance of your unknown solution in your spectrometer. This will allow you to calculate the concentration of the unknown using Beer's law and the molar extinction coefficient you found from your line. That sums up everything you'll need to know for this experiment. Good luck!